We have a lot of information to cover today, so let's get straight into this update with a look at the tropics. Major Hurricane Eric has the spotlight as it makes landfall at Category 3 intensity in the state of Oaxaca, Mexico. With destructive sustained winds of 125 miles per hour, life-threatening storm surge, and widespread torrential rainfall not only along the coast, but also penetrating deeper into the country. On the other hand, no tropical cyclone activity is currently ongoing or expected in the near future across the Atlantic, but I will mention that some pockets of increased rainfall is likely over the coming days across parts of the Caribbean, so there could be some flooding issues where rainfall adds up quickly in a short period of time. Over in Europe, let's quickly review what we've seen over the last week. You may recall how my recent videos revolved around a developing Omega block regime. This led to a period of higher temperatures and a few rounds of intense severe storms across Western Europe before eventually spreading eastward as the pattern began to shift. Then, with high pressure moving off the Atlantic last weekend into the beginning of this week, we saw a brief period of calmer and cooler weather off to the north, but high temperatures and repeated rounds of storms continued from the Iberian Peninsula all the way to Italy. Now, as you can see on the current satellite and radar data as of Thursday afternoon, that's exactly where storms continue to be focused. A small cutoff low is the source of storm activity in southern Italy and nearby portions of North Africa, and then over in Iberia, some were rudely awakened last night as storms blew up off the Portuguese coast and then spread across the country, and even now in the afternoon, we continue to see storms develop and move on shore. Taking a wider view of Europe, another hotspot for storm activities actually the Baltic states into Russia. With high pressure situated off to the south and west, some low pressure systems coming off the Atlantic were forced to go up and over into the Nordic countries, and then as they slide towards Russia, they're producing plenty of storm activity. But not all of those incoming Atlantic disturbances are being forced way up into higher latitudes. There's one sitting over the Azores archipelago right now, and as high pressure over mainland Europe slowly slides east and degrades, this disturbance will also slowly move east, and this is going to help draw that very warm North African air mass into France, Ireland, and the UK on Friday and Saturday, quickly spreading into Central and Eastern Europe on Sunday and Monday. This is all quite similar to what we just saw unfold last week, so you might be wondering if we're also going to get more outbreaks of severe storms. I'll get back to that in just a moment, but let me quickly show you some graphics which will help pinpoint the progression of this heat wave. As of today, temperatures are above average for most of us, with the main exception being the Nordic and Baltic countries, where all of that rain and cloud cover is moving through. Going into Friday, temperatures increase further, especially from the Iberian Peninsula and throughout France, the UK, and Ireland, with cooler air still holding on further east. Now on Saturday, the heat wave reaches its peak across the UK, France, and the Benelux. Also take note of the slight eastward progression of those high temperatures, and that really becomes more noticeable as we turn the page to Sunday. Now Germany is in the bullseye for far above average temperatures as much cooler air and refreshing Atlantic rain spreads across Ireland and the UK once again. And now pushing this forward one more day, here's what things should be looking like on Monday. The heat wave loses intensity off to the east, but as you can see, much of Europe remains above average, and it even starts to make a comeback in the UK and Ireland. Let's now turn our attention to the precipitation side of things. Starting today, there's a lot of available thunderstorm energy from Portugal and Spain to the Mediterranean, and this is represented by all that pink and yellow floating around. I like using this graphic because it really accentuates where the instability is as weather patterns shift. As temperatures increase on Friday up through France and the UK, we also see some convective energy show up as far north as Scotland, so I wouldn't be surprised to see some pop-up storms mainly around the higher terrain of Wales and Scotland during the afternoon and evening, with other storms forming in northwestern France. Saturday could present the best chance for more widespread storm activity mainly in Wales and England, and this is also when temperatures will be highest. On Sunday, there's all that rain spreading into Ireland and the UK, helping to briefly knock down temperatures. And then from Iberia all the way to Denmark, there is some potential for some storm activity, but quite honestly, this does not look anywhere near as significant as the series of severe weather events we saw last week, but it's still something to watch nonetheless. One other thing to take note of is this upper level low which is lurking next to Iberia. This breaks off from the low pressure systems which moved off to the north and east and it could stick with us for several days, continuing to provide instability across much of Portugal and Spain. Lastly, here's the convective overview graphic for Monday. Quite an uptick in storm activity stretching from that disturbance near Portugal all the way to Czechia, Slovakia, Poland, and even the Baltic states. This could very well be the most active day for storms, especially in terms of coverage.
Here's a look at all the rain to expect through next Monday. It really doesn't appear to be much across southern Europe despite the potential for all those storms, and that's mostly because weather models struggle to simulate scattered convective activity, which makes sense since it's very unpredictable. The bottom line is just to be aware of locally intense rainfall wherever those storms do set up. Now from the UK and Ireland and extending through the Nordic and Baltic countries, most of the precipitation will come from periods of steadier rain, so this is much easier for weather models to predict. One last thing before we conclude today's forecast, I wanted to give you a quick preview into next week. One of the main highlights I'm seeing suggested by several weather models is a turn towards a zonal flow regime, and unlike an omega block which tends to be more stuck, Zonal flow is characterized by predominantly west to east movement of air in the atmosphere, creating a more uniform and predictable weather pattern. We might see several Atlantic disturbances passing through northern Europe while the southern half is largely untouched. This makes it easy for intense heat to build. In terms of severe storms, keep an eye on that cutoff low near Iberia, especially during the first half of the week, and then with those Atlantic lows clashing with the warm air across Europe, I expect to see more rounds of strong to severe storms across several countries. Thank you all for watching this forecast. I know it was a lot of information to digest, but to conclude this video, please enjoy the weather-related media submitted by subscribers of this channel.